Okay, and we're back. Hopefully, apparently there was an issue, but I'm I'm using a different uh, broadcasting setup this time. Used to uh, used to be I used uh, XSplit, and uh, well, Nvidia has upgraded to the point where they actually have their own onboard streaming setup. So I'm going to go ahead and try to use that uh, and see how it works. So far, not a good start, but uh, we'll see what happens. Um, so, as I was saying, uh, Star Citizen has, ha has been having this big uh, interstellar air and space show, or aerospace show, whichever. Basically, they've been showcasing uh, all of their ships for their anniversary, uh, four-year anniversary, I think it is. And uh, one of the great things about it is it's brought back, uh, or made accessible certain ships that have been unavailable for the last few years, uh, almost since their concept sale uh, years ago. And one of those ships was the Banning Merchantman, and uh, I, I so wish I could show it to you today, but um, unfortunately it's still being developed. But because it was available, I was you know, actually able to purchase it. Hey, here we go. Let's, let's see if this... Let's see if we can get this going. Anywho, hey, hmm, hello. All right, so we're back in Star Citizen. Hello, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Argus Wolf. I don't know if you were actually paying attention or around or whatever, but. Um, I'm back, I'm streaming again today because it's my last day to do anything before I have to go back on the road. And I just felt like getting in some Star Citizen and walking around showing you guys stuff. Also, I want to make a shameless, shameless plug for what is, I believe, the last day or two of, um, their big anniversary sale. When I say big, I mean huge. Um, they're actually, they have made available pretty much every ship they have ever sold, uh, including one that I have had my eye on now for several months, the Banu Merchantman, which still is not available. Uh, they don't even have a hangar ready. Um, and as big as it is, I don't, well, it might fit in a the hangar. They, they managed to get the Starfarer in there, so. Um, but yeah, there have been so many ships that have been made available for this anniversary that is crazy. Um, yeah, check it out. We don't want any civilian casualties here. Uh oh, somebody's in trouble. Uh, check it out. New store. Well, new store location, anyways, on Olasar. It is Dumper's Depot. This is where you'll get stuff for your ships. Very cool. Can't wait for this to open. So, anyhow, um, like I said, they, they have reopened a bunch of ships, or made a bunch more ships available for sale, and they've actually got some special ship additions, uh, ships with different paint jobs, things, things like that. Um, there's a really, really cool saber edition out there. It's got a, a kind of a camouflage texture to it. It's uh, with blue, blue highlights. It's a really, really cool looking, but, um, I, I don't have access to it here. You will have to go to the, web, the RSI website to check it out. Anyhow, so like I was saying, I've had <laughs> blah blah blah. I've had my eye on a Banu Merchant Man for the last few months. It really, really looks cool, and the idea behind it uh, being kind of a, a, a secret armed merchant ship um, plays well with one of the play concepts I've really been interested in. So, I bought it. I actually melted a uh, my Vanguard Sentinel that I'd been looking forward to to get it. Well, because the Bandu Merchant Man isn't actually available in game, they've given me as a placeholder the RSI Constellation Andromeda. Very cool, right? Big multi-crew ship. Um, So I'm going to try and show it to you without C10. 
Your ship is currently being delivered to the launch platform. I'm gonna try to show it off without letting anybody else steal it or get into it. Which is very difficult to do, but you know, hey. Alright, so far things are working pretty good. Last time, for those of you who may have actually been watching, um, I was having an issue with the game locking up at this point. But it seems to be working okay right now. Hopefully I'll be able to, to actually show you guys uh, around the ship. So check it out. This is my placeholder ship. This will be replaced by... God, it has been such a long time since I've looked at Connie up close. Such a beautiful ship. I love it. You got turrets galore, manned, and I believe unmanned turrets. It's a freaking awesome looking ship. It is huge. Uh, but this is the placeholder for my Banu Merchantman. Really, really cool. It's also, uh, it's got a cargo bay. It's got... Check it out. This is the first ship in the game that actually comes with a nested ship. This actually comes with a P-52 Merlin available. It's a part of the ship. You buy the, the Connie, you get a Merlin. It's freaking awesome. Uh, also, for those of you who may have, have seen it, this is one variant of the ship that was used in the latest video to show off planetary... Um, Uh, exploration. That version was more military, whereas this is more of an exploration ship, but it is the same basic ship. Um, it's also so huge that it has this. It's also got a cargo bay that maybe I'll open up later. Um, so anyways, I want to go ahead and get into the, the pilot seat so we can get out of here and hopefully not be interrupted. Now, like I said, this is a huge, huge ship. It's awesome. It's one of the... Well, I mean, it's one of the only multi-crew ships that are available so far. Um, I love all the little animations. Landing complete. Woohoo! Take off complete. There we go. And like I said, she's my placeholder for... Standby. Scanning. Uh, she's the placeholder for my Banu merchant. Standby, scanning. Which tells you that the Banu is at least as big as this. It's definitely a multi crew ship. Oops. Landing gear raised. There we go. Standby, scanning. Big damn ship. Listen to those engines. There's all the sir. Stand by, scanning. Let's see if we can get a nice external view, shall we? That is a big damn ship. Go ahead and go into cruise mode so we can kind of get out of the way. But she's a huge ship, okay. So, going with my usual demo information bit, right now we're in cruise mode, uh, which that's something else, uh, as of 2.6 I think it is, they're going to be changing the flight mode system. So all of this stuff I'm telling you about, cruise Stand mode, on. SCM, stuff like that is gonna be kinda out of date as of the first, or as of the first bit of December. Um, but anyways, getting back to that, your HUD is very Stand cool. By. You've Stand got me. these really cool blue uh, graphics and whatnot. Um, really easy to see all your readouts. You've got your damage and shield schematic in the upper left-hand corner, your target information in the lower or upper right. Standby. Scanning. Uh, lower right, 
looks like it has more target information if I had a target. Lower left you've got your weapon uh, readout which is, let's see here, we've got laser cannon, laser cannon, laser cannon. A lot of laser cannon stuff, let's see here. Cool. Alright. Uh, then, top center, you've got your uh, power, shield, and uh, other readouts, uh, your energy distribution, um, your, your heat and EM signatures, which are so huge compared to what I'm used to. Um, but it's it's really really cool. Okay, so going back to basic stats here. Uh, let's see here. In cruise mode, your speed is 470 meters per second, which is obviously not very fast, but it's a big ship. You're not expected to go very fast. Uh, top center, you got your quantum fuel quantum fuel readout, which is I don't mean it's quantum fuel. Um, it's what you use for your, your quantum jumps or your quantum drive. Uh, let's see here. Go back to SCM. Let it slow down a bit. Do, 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 do. I don't expect it to be over 200 meters per second. And we've got... Ooh. Wow. Okay, so top speed with a stock loadout in space combat mode is 155 meters per second and for those who don't know, with precision mode, top speed is always 50 meters per second, regardless of what ship you're in. It's just the way they do it. It's for landing and all that fun stuff. Alright, so... Let's see here. Flare selected. That's not what I wanted. Chaff selected. Flare selected. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and fly somewhere, shall we? Maybe we'll find some pirates to shoot at. Uh, Comare. You know what? Let's see what Comares need help. Huh. Um, as you can see here, my Alpha UEC is is still there. It hasn't been reset, uh, so they are still working with, uh, with persistency, which is awesome. <coughs> ah, 126, huh? All right, let's go ahead and go to, <coughs> pardon me, uh, communications relay 126. All right, let's, uh, let's see here. It is down this way. Whee! And you, you can tell it is a, a big ship, very bulky, very massive, the way it handles, it's sluggish on the controls, but what do you expect from something this size? You know, you're not gonna get a, a dog fighter in something the size of a Connie. Stand by, scanning. Radar contact. Stand by, scanning. Radar contact. Stick around, and it's gonna change. Target acquired. Alright, well, let's see here. Flare away. That's one down. Yeah. Now, if I recall correctly, you actually get paid for killing pirates, but I could be mistaken. Uh, I didn't want to use two of them, but okay. Okay. All right, combat seems to actually be a little more, a little more fluid at the moment. Maybe it's because it's just a big damn ship. Okay, looks like I've killed them all. So this is where it's going to get interesting. So I haven't actually done this in a little while. Being that this is a bigger ship, I can't just hop out of the cockpit and float over. I actually have to get out of the... And see, that's one of the cool things about these big multi-crew ships. Is... While in a lot of situations... In the smaller ships, like uh, like my Ghost... 
or one of the other smaller ships, you have to wear your flight suit at all times. In a ship like this, you can actually take your suit off and wear well, whatever the hell you feel like it, really. There we go. Whoa. Okay, this is not working the way it's... Oh. <laughs> okay, there we go. I was a little confused there for a second. Uh, but yeah, it's it's really... Um, it's really cool because in the larger ships, you can wear whatever you want to. You can wear civilian clothes, you can wear... Because you're not just stuck in a single-seat cockpit, you know? You're stuck, you're you're in a large ship that has a bridge. You know? And I mean, if you've watched Star Trek or Star Wars or anything like that, you know, <clears throat> any space-based, you know, starship flying movie or TV show, they're not always wearing spacesuits. I mean, Battlestar Galactica too. I mean, just all those, all those game or all those movies and TV shows that have larger ships. They're running around wearing you know military uniforms or you know whichever. They're not. They're not wearing. Um, they're not wearing flight suits. They're not wearing vac suits. Which, yeah, I guess you could, if you think about it, it's kind of a bad thing because, hey, it's, you're in space. You really should be wearing a back suit just in case. Um, anywho. What I'm getting at is, if you're in a ship like this, it's more of a, a home than, uh, than just a... Okay, obviously they're still having issues with that. <laughs> huh. Okay. So let me go ahead and hop in the cockpit. Let's get us somewhere safe real quick. Um, and then I'll, I'll take you on a little guided tour of this thing. I just kind of wanted to show you some, some combat stuff. Show you how... It's actually a really decent... It's not a bad combat ship, considering it's not the combat model. Uh, Position alert. Port. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's not the combat model of this thing, so... Really... Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and spin this up, and we're just gonna take a random hop. So that should have gotten us out of reach of pretty much everyone. You know, we're, we're out in the middle of space, there's nothing around us, and there's nothing people can target. So we're, I'm going to go ahead and shut this down and show you around. Uh, but like I was saying earlier, a ship like this is more like a home than just a, uh, just a ship. So let's take a look around real quick. So obviously, you can see we've got three different stations up here. You've got your pilot station. Uh, I'm not really sure what these are uh, specifically. Let's go ahead and take a look. Huh? You've got the, the rotating seats. I love these animations. They make it so much more interesting than just, you know, hit, sitting in a seat and being done. You know? So, okay, what do we got here? We have... Ah, Okay. So here you got your power and yeah your, your power distribution and power throttle. So this guy is going to be your power officer, your engineering officer, basically. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see, I can't remember the damn. Don't remember the button, but anywho, obviously you'd be able to control your power distribution and all that from here. So. Very cool. Um, you know, I'll bet you they're both uh, 
you know, both those side seats had the same readout. The the biggest difference, or the only thing, the reason you got two of them is so that you can have one person dealing with power distribution and one person doing shield distribution. I mean, it makes sense, right? You got the guy in the center who's flying the ship, playing the, or flying the ship, shooting the guns, or, well, shooting the main guns. Ah, look at this, shields. Like I said, you got one guy doing power distribution, one guy doing shield distribution. Very cool. So yeah, you got the guy in the center who's flying the ship, dodging stuff, shooting stuff. Uh, and then you got two guys dealing with the engineering aspects. So that's actually really, really cool. Got avionics. And, you know, again, and something that a lot of people don't talk about a whole lot um, is the fact that all these areas, the shield gen, the avionics, all that stuff is actually going to be... Um, you can, you can actually work with it in-game. You're going to be able to, or at least you're supposed to be able to, turn them on and off. Um, things like that. Hmm. But yeah, you're supposed to be able to turn on or repair avionics and all those kinds of things, so... Okay, that's not what I wanted. Now that little center pit there that we just swung away from, that's actually your turret uh, access. For some reason it's not allowing me to get in there. But basically you, you got a, uh, you got turret gunners. So we'll go ahead and go back a little farther. Um, so like I was saying earlier about this being a home, you've got lockers, you've got, let's see here, bunks, I believe these are bunks, yep, and actually I think, I think these are escape pods too, from the looks of it, which is really cool, you've got your little, uh, communal seat space, I guess, what did I just... Now, of course, as the game uh, is more developed, what the hell is that? But as the game develops more, um, they're going to have. Okay, I think there's supposed to be a table that pops out of the floor there. But <clears throat> as the game, yeah, look at the animations. The hand is actually sitting on the table there, so that's that's really cool. I guess the animations either not working right now or not implemented. But there's supposed to be a table that pops out. That's really cool. Um, but yeah, anyways, as I was saying, as the game is, is developed further, you're going to have a lot of contextual controls. Where it says use right now, it'll actually say a lot more. It'll, it'll tell you exactly, whoops, um, what you'll be doing. So, anyhow, so here's the cargo bay. Um, if you've watched the, the demo, ooh, look at that, missile racks. Nice. Lots and lots of missiles. Holy crap. Um, avionics bays. Again, all stuff you'll be able to, to repair and, and work with in-game. Um, but, okay, so if you watch the demo, you'll know that this is where in-game, or in the, in the most recent demo, the guy actually had a, a, a rover-type vehicle housed. So check it out. There's your cargo bay. You can drive vehicles on and off, load cargo into and and remove from your ship. It's a really cool feature. Um, I really like it. I, I mean, this is an awesome ship. It is so incredibly detailed, very well put together. So let's let's continue on back. 
And let's see back here, you've got your power plant, gravity generator, I mean, just all sorts of fun stuff. And <laughs> remember that Merlin I was showing you earlier? Here it is. Here's your access to your Merlin. Ooh, is it actually going to let me take it for a spin? Maybe. Now, this may be a mistake. I might not be able to get back into the ship from here. Okay, okay. So, actually, it looks like you can't actually debark the Merlin from the Connie right now, which is fine. That's still it's something that's not really been worked on a whole lot. They've been busy with a lot of other stuff with um, uh, Star Marine and everything else. So, but like I said, it's just it's incredibly cool that this ship has a Merlin embarked. So, like, say you're you're out and about with your crew, you're going to go take a look at some stuff. Um, but you want someone to fly combat air patrol or uh, just do a quick scouting run. Ooh, another airlock. Is this actually open? Oh, hello. Aw. Oh, why for you do that? Dude, check it out. <laughs> I think they need to work on their animations for that a tiny bit, but... Alright, so let's get a, a, a little bit of a, an outside look at the constellation Andromeda. So, ooh, hey, check it out. There is a topside hatch. You, okay, and, and when I was showing the turrets earlier, there is an upper and a lower turret. Not really sure what's supposed to go in here. I don't know. Could just be like engineering access panels. I mean, who knows? The, the thing the thing about ships like this is while they're freaking awesome, there are a lot of mechanics that haven't been implemented in game yet that I see there's the laser cannons that I was firing earlier. Look at those things. They're freaking huge. They're, I think they're bigger than I am. Look at that. That is huge. No, I'll check something. So, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of mechanics that um, aren't really implemented yet, like the uh, the Merlin, um, like the, well, like being able to have destructible or repairable, uh -oh, um, destructible or repairable, something's wrong, uh oh There we go. Or repairable uh, modules within the ship. Um, so you, you really... There's a lot that you can look forward to. And you see, here's the Merlin just snugged right there in its cradle. And I don't think that was an original feature. I don't remember that being an original feature of the Kami, but it's still very, very cool. Um... But yeah, just all those features that you really don't have in um, in game right now are things you can look forward to in the future. Where you know your ship's internals are going to get you're going to go into combat, and your ship's internals are going to get damaged by pirates or whatever. Maybe you fly into something, and so you're going to have to like send somebody back to repair Ooh, look at that it's like a soup can you gonna let me in or what Let me in, let me in. It's like freaking three little pigs, not by the air of my chin, chin, chin. <laughs> huh. Okay, apparently that's not working right, but that's alright. Um, so yeah, you, you 
have all these really cool things that are going to happen once the game is fully implemented. Um, I guess we'll just go in through the cargo bay, huh? And I really am excited for it. I'm gonna drop on my head. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be something that they're gonna have to work on. There we go. Or I'm going to have to work on one of the two. Alright, so now that that's done... <laughs> let me see if maybe I can get into one of these turrets. Huh? That, that would be fantastic if I could do that, but... Nah, it doesn't look like it. Okay, that's fine. But you know it's there, and you know that eventually they're gonna... It, you know... Once everything is 100% working and we're out of alpha and all that... It's gonna be just a really, really cool system. A really fun ship to fly, especially with a crew. So, let's see here. Where shall we go? Now... Like I said earlier, this is actually just a placeholder for me. I've actually got a Banu Merchantman that I purchased um, that is going to be so cool. It's bigger than this. It's, If I remember the specs correctly, it's about as long as a Starfarer, which if you've seen, seen a Starfarer, they're freaking massive. I don't know how tall it is because there's a lot of specs that haven't been finalized for the Merchantman. But if you go to the RSA website, you look up the, the Banu Merchantman, it is so cool. And uh, they've actually, they have actually quoted, or been quoted as saying that the, one of the major ins inspirations of, uh, or for, for the Banu Merchantman were the old tall ships from, you know, the Age of Sail and stuff like that, which really speaks to me because I love the shields old tall ships. Stand by for shields. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's been a really, it's a really cool design concept. I love it. Um, one of the, the really cool design concepts though, and we'll go ahead and fly somewhere so it's not looking so dull here. Um, but one of the really cool design concepts You know, we're gonna go. We're gonna go visit Grim Hex again. But one of the really cool design concepts of the um, Stand by. Scanning. <laughs> I just love the sound effects uh, of the Banu Merchantman. Is it's actually meant to be kind of a blockade runner. Stand by. Scanning. And what I mean by that is it's meant to... It's meant to fly through blockades, obviously. I mean, that's where the term blockade runner comes from. But one of the things that's cool about it, or at least in the initial design, was that it had hidden weapons. Um, I don't know if that's actually going to be a thing in... Oh, there it is. I don't know if that's going to be an actual thing in the... or when it's released. I hope it is. Because one of the cool things about that is you can be floating around and if somebody doesn't know about the BMF, you know, Banu Merchantman, they're not going to realize this thing's packing more firepower than you would, you would think a merchant ship has. Stand by. Scanning. Stand by. Scanning. Um, let's see here. If I'm not mistaken, it's in there. So, you could be flying around, playing fat, dumb, and happy, have some raiders or pirates or whatever who decide they want to 
take you on that maybe they don't know what a BMM is, they don't know what to expect with it, all of a sudden you unload with you know, with massive amounts of ordnance and they're like, oh my god, oh my god, and it's just, it's a really cool uh, concept and I'm looking forward to it, to being able to play with it. For now though, I'll play with my Connie, because that's just fun. You know, it's definitely the biggest ship that I have had access to so far. Um, well, the Retaliator's pretty damn big, but the BNA, or the, the Connie is one of the biggest ships in the game right now. Uh, well, yeah, one of the biggest ships. The biggest one, of course, being the Starker. But... Let's see here. I think this is where Grim Hex is. Pretty sure it is, anyways. I could be mistaken. Damn thing so hard to find, it's not even funny. But hey, it's a criminal hideout, right? So that kind of makes sense. I love the the ambient music to the game. They've they've done such an awesome job with the the music with the score. That's Grimhex. I think I can see the support structures. I think that's probably the only negative I have with the Connie is the uh, the structure, the, the the window structure. You've got all these support beams that come right down in front of you. So your your view, you know, you got some obstructions. It's not terrible, but it's not great either. You know, I'm I'm used to flying ships that have much greater visibility. But, you know, I guess for a ship this big, it's not really going to hurt things too bad. Man, they've added a lot of space dust. <laughs> I mean, I guess it makes sense in an asteroid field. I mean, come on, you're going to have a lot of rock particles blown around, you're going to have collisions between asteroids, and that's actually something I think they're going to be working on at some point. Radar contact. Stand by. Stand. Radar contact. Staff away. Flare away. Radar contact. Stand by. Stand by. Stand by. Radar contact. Stand by. Stand by. Contact. Acquired. Good night. Low shields damaged. No shields damaged. Stand up on the shields. Damn it. No shields damaged. <laughs> That's kind of amusing. Stand by for shields. Target acquired. Some shields damaged. Stand by. Scanning. Enemy down. Shields damaged. Whoa. Target acquired. Looks like I took a hit somewhere. Chaff away. Stand by for shields. No flare. Flare away. There we go. I do like how they punctuate. Um, where was I headed? They punctuate the uh, the combat. You know, now anytime you kill a, pi a pirate. It, um, 
has that little musical sting. Ah, hell. Nope, this is the way I wanted to go. That's right. I do like that there are pirates hiding in the belt now. That's that's actually really cool. Uh, hmm, I wonder if I went the wrong way to get to Grimhex. Flare selected. There we go. So yeah, if you actually go to Yellow now, um, there are pirates floating around within the asteroid belt. I know when I first started playing Star Citizen, there really weren't a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of well, there weren't any pirate instances in this, in this part of space. Um, but they've really upped that. So I mean, you can f be flying around and encounter something to do. It's great. Uh, there's also salvage. Anytime you see what looks like a faint green flare in the distance, it's usually a wreck or a derelict. So there's plenty to do. And I think I went the wrong way to get to Grim Hex, which, you know, it happens. Let me turn around here see if maybe I can figure out where the heck it is. I think I see a salvage blip, uh, blip in there. Mostly that's just, you know, guns. Um, I've been told that there are other things as well. Like, uh, alcohol, cigars, things like that. love the sound of the engine spooling up on this thing. It's just so freaking awesome. Oh, that's not a Grim Hex, is it? I can't tell from here. Ah, uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> Found you. Like I said, it's really, really well hidden. I mean, if you know what you're looking for, if you know how to get there, then it's not that bad, but, like... You know, you can pass it really Stand easy. Stand by. Scanning. Say hello to Green Hags. <laughs> I know I've showed this place off before, but I still enjoy showing it to to other people or showing it to people. It's it's one of the biggest additions they've made to this game in recent months. Is you know an entirely new space station, someplace where if you're not a good guy, you know if you are you know bound and determined to be a criminal, which hey there are going to be people like that in this game, um, especially or in, even at this early. Uh, this early date. Landing gear deployed. No landing zones, huh? I'm sure they're around here somewhere. Stand by. Scanning. Just gotta find them. Landing zone, landing zone. There's a landing zone. Stand by. Scanning. I'm sure someone's going to run off with my ship once it's landed, but you know what? That's okay.
All right. Landing request approved. Keep forgetting this place does not exactly have. Oh, there we go. Engaging autopilot. I guess you just got to be lined up really, really well. Landing complete. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Grim Hex. See how long it takes before someone steals my ship, huh? Because, for those of you who don't know, this place is more or less lawless. Yeah, so you can use your guns here. Um, again, I don't know how many of you have been to Grim Hex already, or how many have seen my previous episodes that have Grim Hex, but, you know, hey. It's... God, it's just that looks so bloody awesome. I'm sorry. <laughs> it is an awesome looking ship. Yeah, oh, that's... thought I saw something. That's not an entrance. But yeah, so this is basically... This is where you can go... Say you got criminal status, right? And... You know, back in the... Back before Grimhex existed... If you had criminal status, you'd spawn in Olasar and you would, like, immediately be branded a criminal. People would kill you. And, uh, yeah, you... you You'd kind of be screwed. So this is where you go if you're a dedicated pirate, dedicated bad guy. For now. You know, that's going to change, but... For now, this is where you go. If you if you die as a pirate, as a, a, a bad guy, this is where you'll wake up. This is where you will spawn. You'll be able to... Uh, wander around here without people taking pot shots at you. There are places where you can get shot at, obviously. I mean, the, the, the landing pad was one such area. I was, you know, shooting around my ship, so. But, I mean, this place is actually really, really cool to look at. It's very worn down, run down, uh, even just the, the screens, you know. You've got a map. Uh, you see how the, the screens only see, say Grim Hex, even though it's supposed to be Green Imperium. So, I mean, it's a really cool location. I suggest if you get the chance, if you haven't been here already, um, check it out. Um, just to make it easier on anyone who's not been there before, and who wants to check it out, and who doesn't want to spend hours flying around Yella trying to find the place, uh, there's a little trick. What you do is you line up, you... you uh, turn on your navigation system for your um, shite for your quantum drive. You line yourself up on yellow, then you turn you turn yourself slightly off to the side so you're not actually flying to yellow. Once you and then you engage the drive. Once you get past yellow, you disengage your drive manually, turn around, line up with yellow, fly to it, 
And then just uh, once you arrive, you go to port and just. So it's a lot easier to find that way than just tr you know, trying to scour the, the place. So uh, at any rate, I think I'm going to end this here. For those of you who watched, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, as always, I'm going to move this over to my YouTube channel so you can take a look at it uh, uh, anytime you want. There will be there will actually be timestamps this time. And you know, if there are any questions you want to ask or just any statements you want to make. Uh, Feel free. I try to answer anything that's uh, that's there. Obviously, I'm not a developer. I'm not a uh, I'm not associated with CIG in any way, so I don't know all the inner workings. I don't know when everything's supposed to come out. Um, and I'm not even one of those YouTubers who like has a serious in with CIG. So, you know, I'll tell you what I can, but everything I learn is, uh, you know, I learn it maybe a little bit before. The general public, but not always. So, like I said, you know, watch the video, enjoy it, leave questions, comments if you like, like the video, like the channel if you'd like. Uh, I'm going to try and get back into doing this more often, uh, especially when 2.6 and other releases come out because that's going to be really cool to see what new stuff comes out. And believe you me, when the BMM comes out, that I'm going to be spending a lot of time uh, going through that. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed the show, and I look forward to doing this again next time. Should be in about a month. So, uh, take care, guys, and I will see you in the verse.